This is MathGuy.com. Today we're going to take a look at trigonometric functions of special angles. And uh, in order for us to do this, there are some things that you have to know. There, so there's some prerequisite knowledge, and I'm going to draw your attention up here to the top right side. Uh, you have to know something about special angles, obviously, and uh, the 30-60-90 triangle is over here. you got the 45-45-90 triangle over there. Now, you have to have this information memorized if you're going to be able to calculate and be efficient at uh, problems. Uh, opposite 45 degrees should be 1, and uh, these are just ratios. So the ratio there is 1, opposite the other 45 is 1, and then the hypotenuse is radical 2. So those are the ratios of the sides for 45, 45, 90 triangles. Here you got 30, 60, 90, opposite the 30 is 1. Opposite the 60 is radical 3. And then opposite the 90 degree angle, or the hypotenuse, is 2. That you have to have memorized. Another thing you have to have memorized is this mnemonic device. It's going to be crucial uh, for understanding these problems. Uh, first thing you need to know is that the S, C, and T stand for sine, cosine, and tangent. So uh, in order to read this mnemonic device for sine, cosine, and tangent, this sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So those letters mean something, and they help us build the ratios when we calculate sine, cosine, and tangent. So I have three problems here, and I'm going to be drawing upon this knowledge pretty heavily. So uh, let's do them. Let's jump into these problems. So it says here we're going to calculate the sine of 210 degrees. First thing we need to do is draw it. Where's 210? Well, I know 210 is between 180 and 270. So I know it's going to be in this area or in that quadrant, which is quadrant 3. So I'm going to draw an arrow in that quadrant. Now I'm going to figure out what's the reference angle. So let's see, if this is 210, and I subtract these, I'm going to get 30. So I know this is a 30 degree reference angle. All right, so if it's a 30 degree reference angle, uh, I'm going to draw my side, making this a right triangle. I always draw it right back to the x-axis to make a right angle. And I've got a right triangle now. All right, so let's see. Opposite the 30 I know is a 1. Opposite the right triangle, or the right angle, that is, is 2. The other side's got to be radical 3. Now, one additional concern is that we're in the third quadrant, and if we were graphing this point right here in the third quadrant, we'd have to go left and down. So if we go left, that makes that point, or value, negative. If we're going down, that makes this negative. So those directions... The, I should say the direction mandates that we put negatives there. All right, so now let's calculate. Now, in order for us to calculate, we have everything we need to know now. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that means opposite side is over here, right? Opposite is right over there. So I'm going to get negative 1 over the hypotenuse 2. So negative 1 over 2. Or you could write one half and put a negative sign in the middle. So it's a negative half is our answer. All right, let's go on to the next problem. The next problem is 300. Now we know 300 degrees is between 360 and 270. So I know it's right over there. So I'm going to draw that. So I'm going to draw that in that quadrant four. And again, I'm going to try to figure out what is this reference angle. Well, if that's 300 degrees, I know that, let's see, 360 take away 300, that's got to be 60 degrees. So I got a 60 degree reference angle. Now you draw your side always back to the x axis. So I draw this right back to the x axis, forming another right angle there. And now I know that I'm going to be using the 30, 60, 90 relationships. Opposite 60 is radical 3. Uh, hypotenuse opposite the right angles two. The other side's got to be one. All right. Now again, I'm graphing this point. 
So this direction mandates that I look at negatives. So if I go right, that's positive. Down, that's negative. So that's going to be a negative radical 3. All right, so we have our diagram with our negatives and positives where they belong. Now we write our answer. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is the negative radical 3. And the adjacent side is the 1. All right, well, another way to write that is just negative radical 3. And that's our answer, negative radical 3. All right, moving on. Now let's get to this other problem. Now this other problem has an, uh, kind of a hidden problem, and that is I've got radians here. I've got 3 pi over 4. So what I'm going to first do is take the 3 pi over 4, and I'm going to convert it into degrees. So what I want to do is cancel the degrees, or I'm sorry, cancel the pi. So uh, I'm going to use 180 as the same thing as pi. So I'm going to put pi down here so that they cancel. There, I have this problem set up so that it now cancels. So I know the pi's are going to cancel. And now I'm going to cancel, let's see, 4 goes into 180. That's right, divide that by 4, you get 1. 180 goes into, I'm sorry, 4 goes into 180. Uh, let's see, that 90, that'd be 45. All right, so I've canceled as much as I possibly can. Now the only thing I can do is multiply across. 3 times 45, and I get 135. So it turns out that I'm really dealing with a 135 degree angle. So uh, this problem is really asking me to calculate what is the cosine of 135 degrees. And that's what we'll do. We'll calculate that. All right, well, where's 135 degrees? Well, I know 135 is between 90 and 180. So it's somewhere in this quadrant right here, in the second quadrant. All right, so it's 135. Now let's figure out what the reference angle is. The reference angle always goes back to the right, uh, I'm sorry, the x-axis. So I'm going to take 180, take away 135 is 45. All right, so I'm dealing with a 45 degree angle. Again, I draw this back to the x-axis. It's a right angle. And now I use my special triangle to put all the sides there. So the legs are each going to be 1. The hypotenuse is radical 2. And I've got my triangle all set up. Again, I have to look at the directional component. Now, if I was graphing this point, start the origin, I go left, oh, left, that's a negative. I go up, no, that's a positive. So that's negative 1. 1 are the two sides there, two legs. Keeping, again, the hypotenuse always positive. All right, now that I've got my triangle all set up, I can now use my mnemonic device for cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if here's my angle, the adjacent side's negative 1, hypotenuse is radical 2. So negative 1 is the adjacent side, hypotenuse is radical 2. This would be great, great answer so far. Except another little problem is that you should never leave your radicals in the denominator. So we're going to rationalize this. So anytime you get a radical in the denominator, you rationalize. So I'm going to multiply this by radical 2 over radical 2. And then I will get my answer here. So when I do this, I'm going to have negative 1 times radical 2. That's negative radical 2. And I have radical 2 times radical 2, that's radical 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And that's the answer right there. Okay, so this is the answer to this last problem as a rationalized solution. All right, so there you go. We have all our uh, problems done. And I uh, showed you how to do it using those special triangles in Sokotoa, the mnemonic device. So please go back to mathguide.com, check out all our videos, interactive quizzes, lessons, and activities. Take care.